entertainment capital of the world, it's the Joe Cortez Show. Welcome once again to the Joe Cortez Show here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the boxing capital of the world. And of course, we know the entertainment capital of the world. And I, I say it's like, this is really the place to be if you want to be having some fun in Las Vegas, especially if we have celebrities like we have on our show today. We have Diego Magdaleno, former WBO Intercontinental Champion, also an NABF champion. And all I can say about Manny is that he's like a, a gem in boxing and a gem in life. He's a champion inside the ring, outside the ring, because he is a person that I admire so much, not only for what he's done in boxing, but for what he's doing in the community. He's giving out, he's out there, outreach programs, helping these kids just got back from Utah, and has so much to talk about. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, my dear friend, Diego Magdaleno. Diego is, uh, to me, like, like I said before, champion, <laughs> and a real champion. I really love this guy. I, I truly do. He's been on our show several times, and he's the kind of person that always comes forward to help out. And I know you've been traveling, and you just got back, oh, yeah. I believe it was yesterday, and, uh, or Sunday, and you are out there in Utah working with, working with the kids, right? Oh, yeah. I, I've worked with kids, you know, in the past, you know, pretty much throughout my whole career. I, I currently work with the, the Clark County School District, and, uh, I, you know, I've reach out to, to schools. I've been to my, my old high school, my old elementary school, trying to give back. And I think that's what champions are, are about, mm -hmm. giving back to the community. It's what they do with the titles. When they get you know all the work, the sacrifice they put into you know boxing and they get a championship, they get to a championship level, it's like, what do you do with that? You know, and I like to give back to the community. I love to work with the kids because the, the kids to me are believers. You know, and that's my motto. I'm a knockout. You know, it's believing in yourself. So I, I always try to, you know, put that out there for the, for the kids because um, they have this um, unique mentality that where they want to they want to do things and they look up to people like me. So with that, I want to give back in a positive way. Yeah, no question about it. You really bring a lot to to boxing, a lot to the community. We need more people like you. I, I'm glad that you, you're thinking about your future. You're still active as a fighter. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and you, but you're thinking about what you're going to do after boxing. There is life after boxing, and you're preparing for that. It's, it's like training, like a fighter. You start in the preliminaries. Yes. And you start fighting for the championships down the line. That's what you're doing now. You're working your way through. So when you retire from boxing, you know exactly where to go to the next day. Yeah. You're not going to be scratching your hand wondering what I'm going to do next. Right. You already know what you're going to do next. Oh, day. yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of fighters make that mistake where they think that boxing is everything. You can't put your eggs right. in one basket. You have to be able to, uh, to do more. And, you know, <clears throat> with my experiences in boxing, I've always been here and there and meeting and, and greeting with people. It's one thing that I love to do. And it's another thing that I've discussed with, you know, a good, good, great friend of mine, Shannon, Shannon uh, Torres. So, um, you know, a plan B. So we all need a plan B. If Absolutely. things don't go go your way, um, you need that plan B to, to to move forward. Yeah, I would like to see you as a boxing commentator because you know boxing inside out. Oh yes, mm -hmm. you're young. You speak very well. You know, you really got it all. I mean, <laughs> one of <laughs> one of so our much. networks out there watching can pick up uh, uh, Diego Magdaleno's uh, style and looks and intelligence that come along with the sport of boxing. I mean. Very few guys can talk as good as you do after, you. after taking that. punches to the head. Right, and, yeah. And you're, a sharp, you're as sharp as a blade. I you mean. have to. I, I've taken care of myself throughout my boxing career. Um, I've never, you know, been a fighter to, to stay, you know, blow for blow. Hey. In the ring, I've always uh, taken care of myself in and outside of the ring like I carry myself. Exactly. Um, I'm a champion all the way around. You and, are. you know, that's one thing that I, uh, I pride myself on. Yeah, we have our co-host also, uh, Dylan uh, May, who can... Uh, who's been anxious to, to ask you so many questions. Well, that is definitely what I would call you. You're a champion outside the ring as well as inside the ring. Right. And a shout out also to Shannon for this event that, oh, you, yes. that you both did this past yes. weekend. I mean, it was the pictures that we were just looking at. Tell us about that little boy that you were wrapping his hands. I mean, it, did they all just look so excited and, mm -hmm. and maybe what that program was all about for this past weekend that you were involved so in. So it, it, it became an idea of Shannon's, you know, like, hey, to do something, you know, with the uh, the kids of a small town, a very very small town, and how they've never had it, you know, like a hometown hero. Right. So um, when she said that, I was up for it. I've always liked to, you know, give back to the community in any way. And now, you know, not only in Vegas, I'm moving outside of Vegas and going to Utah. So right. it was a different experience, and it was a great one because all of the families were there united, 
And that's what I love to see. I, right. I come from a Hispanic background where we are united in anything we do. So to go down there and, and see how much fun the, the, the parents had. Right. You know, I had some of the parents putting their hands up, you know, you know, teaching them the one twos, just the basics. But um, wrapping the kids' hands, I took the time to wrap every one of their hands, and it was more than we expected. I thought, I thought maybe, you know, 20 kids, sure. and we, we blew that out of the water. We, we had three times as many kids. Mm -hmm. And, and to, just to see their faces, um, you know, with, with, with their hand wraps on, uh -huh. they were looking at their hands like, wow, like I felt like a they fighter. They felt powerful? Yes, they felt powerful. They had so much confidence, and that's what boxing does. Absolutely. It gives you confidence. It gives you, you know, um, an outlook on life. It teaches you about who you are on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, so t to be able to see that and witness that with so many kids was amazing. It was a blessing for me. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, you, you're, you're, we were talking about boxing. Huh? Now, let's go a little bit back what happened this past Saturday. I know oh. you, you had some friends of yours that yes. for Saturday night. Oh, yes. You sparred with both of these fighters in the past with uh, Keith Thurman and Manny oh, yeah. Pacquiao. Uh -huh. uh, what was your take on the fight Saturday night? How was that ring set? Tell me your take. Yeah, well, congrats to Jordanis Ugas, who's, you know, a great, great, great friend of mine, a teammate in the boxing gym. You know, we work under the same uh, coach, Ismael Salas. So um, that was a great victory because I've been in the ring with uh, Brand, uh, Omar Figueroa. Hit, with Omar Figueroa uh, when I was in training camp with uh, Joao Diaz. And um, he's, a, he's a heavy puncher. And I was telling, um, in sparring sessions, I was telling Jordanis, look, you got to stay on the outside and you got to catch him with those long shots. And it was like, it was a counter right hand that he caught him with and put him, pretty much put him down. In the first round? Yes. After that knockdown, I thought it was going to be over for Figueroa. Yeah. He's like a baby face, but the guy yes. was here. But he, he, has, he has heart. He, he had more heart than yes. anybody else. I mean, he doesn't have the Definitely. muscles or nothing like that. Nope. But then again, neither does Andrews Ruiz. Yeah, so talk, yeah, <laughs> talking, <laughs> talking about heart and talking about big hearts, you have a champion like Manny Pacquiao, who I admire. Yeah. I Absolutely. admire the work that he does in the ring, but I admire the work he does outside of the ring. Absolutely. And it's definitely someone that I look up to because he's helped so many um, Filipinos. See, when you, when you see a, a fighter like Manny Pacquiao get in the ring, he's embraced as a fighter. And not only as a fighter, as a hero and what he does outside. He helps uh, hundreds of thousands of people back at home. Yeah, he's, he's bought homes, he's bought entire communities to, to give back and help. He, well, he has, and he gives away half of his, every earning that he makes on a fight. Yeah. He gives half of it away. Look at that picture right there. So these are the houses yes. that he has um, built to, to, for people to live for free yeah. in his community. I mean, besides the fact that he's a senator and someone right. that we all, I admire him outside the ring as well. I mean, now he's, he's, put, someone, he's put together like about 1,500 homes for 1,500 homes, for, 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 homes yes. to start for, with. For I'm poor, sure that's just poor, the beginning. Poor individuals and homeless. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. And then he feeds people every day that he goes out running. Yeah. People stand up, they line the streets, <laughs> and they're waiting for him. And he figures out a dollar amount each day that he's going to give away for that day. Amazing. Yeah. I heard he's giving away over $200 million. He has. Wow. Unbelievable, eh? He's a, yeah, he's a great guy. The, and, to, and to me, that's, an, that's a champion. That is, that a, champion. is a champion. Absolutely. He's a Inside champion the ring, at life. Outside the ring. Right, because we've seen many guys that walk around with a championship belt and do nothing with it. They prance around like, okay, now it's time right. to celebrate. No, let's celebrate the hard work and let's give back to the people who, who still need, need work. Exactly. Well, and I'm someone who doesn't have a championship belt, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> but... It's something that, a practice that we should all take into consideration, right. to be a, a champion inside our home and outside of our home, or inside the ring or outside the ring, to, to be a part of that, know, so that our lives just reflect that all the time. Right. Yeah, you know, Diego, you, you've been around boxing and you've been around outside the community, you've given us so much, and you know how to deal hands-on with, with the youngsters out there. And I, I see the way you carry yourself, what advice can you give uh, our viewers out there as far as keeping yourself on the right track, learning from, from uh, individuals like yourself, you learn from your trainer? What, keep, what advice can you give people out there? Mm. Well, goals. We all, we all need goals. And I think as, as a kid, um, I found boxing. And I'm just giving you what, um, what worked for me because it may not sure. work for everyone else. But I found boxing. I had goals and I started uh, um, 
looking towards my future in goals. And I set, I set little goals and I would accomplish them. I'd win one tournament, I'd do another one. But it was a lot of discipline, hard work, and um, you know, be true to yourself is pretty much the same uh, what, I, what I tell everyone. You know, knowing who you are on the inside and being true to yourself because if you lie to yourself, you're lying. You, you know, you're not gonna get anywhere. So stay true to yourself um, and, and know what, what your goals are and achieve each goal. You know, you had a trainer who would t t tell you certain things you do in life and maybe you don't agree with them or what, and you, you just listen. Yeah, you know, I've always been one to know how to take advice. You have to, it's important to know how to take advice. You, you take what, what's beneficial to you and uh, whatever um, that may not, you may not agree with, you know, just don't say anything and just keep pushing it forward. Right, right. I truly believe in that. I, you have to sometimes uh, bite your tongue and say, you know, Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to do that. I used to do that with my trainer. He would tell me to do certain things. I said, let me pack my time. I don't agree with it. But you mm -hmm. know what? He was right. Yeah. I, I learned a lot from that. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from you. Yeah, but the veteran, he's been around. He, he yes. knows boxing. He knows more about it. I, he was like a father image to me. I come from a single parent home. So if somebody gives you some advice and he try to tell you the certain thing, you got to know how to say, you know what? I'm going to take it. I may not agree with it right now, but yeah. hopefully I'll learn something from it. And that's what happens. You know? Oh, yeah in the real world. So that's why as a fighter, we learned uh, the discipline, to be more disciplined and we have like self-esteem, a confidence level, grow and leave your ego out the door, you know? Go in life and make sure that your life is uh, a, a smooth sail, you know? A smooth ride. Right. Because if you want to make it difficult for yourself, uh, you're going to, like George Foreman, I wrote a book uh, called God in My Court. I remember a chapter I read in there by him saying how angry he was with certain things in life, then he learned how to forgive them when he forgave them, because they caused him to go almost bankrupt. George Foreman, the first time around, became champion in his early 20s, and then he was already just about to retire. He was almost broke. You know, right. where, where all his money go? All these investors say, come on, invest your money here, invest your money there, and then next thing you know, he was almost tapped out completely, no money. But he came back around, became heavyweight champion of the world, but he learned, he became a minister, mm -hmm. and learned to, be, to forgive people, and, and said, you know, I forgive these guys. He forgave them. He said he got a big load off his back. He felt like a new man. And yeah. you see George Foreman, how successful he became. Oh, yeah. And with, with the George Foreman grill. Mm -hmm. And he was a pastor. And, and everybody loves George Foreman now, you know. So, yeah. so, so sometimes we got to accept things the way they are. And then say, you move on. And later on, you realize it was all a blessing in disguise. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. And learning from wiser people or people who have been around open. on this planet right. a little bit longer. Yes. It's always good to learn from uh -huh. that. Take advice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, yeah, I like to help out a lot. As you guys know, I've been around the block a couple of times, and I, I'm still learning. <laughs> I, I'm still learning. I'll tell you, I turn, every day I learn something new because there's always room for improvement. There's always a way to make things uh, life better and, and help people uh, like, you're, like you're doing. That's why I look up to you. Now, besides you're doing your your program with the Community Outreach Program, you're also a realtor. Oh yes, I'm a licensed realtor in, in the state of Nevada, and it's something that um, I've known and I've done uh, in the past, you know, with, with pa houses I've, I've, I've bought and, and paid for. Um, I have uh, ex a little bit of experience with it now, you know, Shannon, who, who's guided me through this whole uh, new new process, a whole new chapter in my life right. with, with real estate. and. Um, you know, I've made some good money. You know, one one thing that I can I can tell you guys is uh, for the viewers, buy the cheapest home in 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 a nice area, yeah. because yes, like they say, location, location, location. Right. Yeah. That's it, it, I can't get enough of it. But the cheapest home in the nice area is what I did my first home that I bought, and in a total of five years, I made a hundred thousand dollars on that home. There you go. So that's quite the investment. So, there. so, so you build a lot of equity on, on a home that's uh, you buy it at the right price, and then mm -hmm. you know you know when to sell it if you have to sell it. Right now, uh, now you do you do which is the, the best? Uh, how's the climate here with uh, with housing in Las Vegas? Well, we all know that the Raiders are making a big move <laughs> here in Las Vegas, and also Google over in Henderson. So the Las Vegas Henderson area is going to be booming pretty soon. Um, it brings uh, thousands of jobs to Las Vegas alone. Yeah, so, so the, the individual that they're interested in coming out to Vegas, yes. I recommend they deal with you because they, Absolutely. <laughs> you, you, you're you going to make them champions. You're going to yes. make them, they're going to win by a knockout. They buy a home with you. <laughs> they buy a home with Diego. You can reach Diego 702 882 4574. Exactly. That's where they can reach you for. And you can reach me at my email at vgko.homes 
at gmail.com. Wow, okay, very good. That, that's a good place to reach Diego Magdaleno, who will definitely guide you the right direction when it comes to uh, buying or purchasing a nice home. Oh, yes. In, in, a, in a lowest price possible and build <laughs> equity on it. Yes. And uh, the thing is to get something, if you have a nice size family, they got good, uh, good three-bedroom, four-bedroom homes here in Vegas. Oh, Pretty yeah. reasonable compared to other states, huh? Oh, yeah, and we're getting a lot oh, yeah. of movers from California making that switch, making that big change. You know, the, the preparing heat, for the Raiders. The, yes, preparing well, for the Raiders. You know, I think they're avoiding the, the, the Vegas heat, but they're getting down here ready to make that, that solid move. Yeah, and, and of course, the tax bracket is a lot lower here. Oh, it's a lot oh, lower, yeah. yes. You're, you're, <laughs> you're avoiding a lot of the taxes that California and other states have. And um, I think a lot of people can appreciate that when it comes to tax, tax dollars. Yeah, and we got pretty good weather year-round here. Yeah. It gets a little hot July and August, but if you can uh, do it, you get acclimated after a while with the hot weather. I've been here 28 years from New York myself. It was kind of hot at the beginning, but then I, shaved, I, I shaved it all off. <laughs> I, I, I felt it be fun to stay a little cooler. Well, only in Vegas <laughs> can you go snowboarding one day and then go out to, the, to, to Lake Mead the next day and still be... You know, in the within, desert. Yes. Get a suntan <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, so. and this morning when I woke up, I was like, am I in Seattle? Yeah. Because it was so gray outside. Yeah. And I, I looked at my weather. I'm like, oh, my goodness, we might have rain today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no. I haven't missed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that Las Vegas is a good place to be. You have so much. Yeah, they, they call it the entertainment capital of the world, but they also not trying to call it the sports capital of the world because we have all sports here in Vegas now, Diego. Oh, yes, big things are coming. I mean, you got baseball, you got yes. basketball, yes. you got football, you got uh -huh. boxing. You have soccer. You have, you have MMA, uh -huh. soccer, Yes. everything else. I mean, you So can Vegas is changing. Vegas is being more fan-friendly. It's changing to a different uh, demographic of where, you know, the viewers all, you know, the hockey team. You know, I've never seen so many hockey fans here in Vegas, and it's because of of, of what Vegas is bringing to, yeah, to yeah, the city. Yeah, with the Golden Knights. Yes, the Golden Knights are doing a big thing, and it's giving people um, uh, a different outlook on just Vegas alone. It's it's becoming more of a, a hometown of, of uh, you know, sports fanatics. And sports, to me, is always it's always been, you know, kept my attention on, on positive things. Yeah, exactly. But, you know... They, buy, they talk about sports in, in, in Nevada, but, you know, the first sport in Las Vegas was boxing. Of course. Boxing. <laughs> Let's stay true to our boxing. game. <laughs> yeah. Let's stay true to our game. It'll be loyal to our game. Uh, yes. And uh, we, we have so many friends here in Vegas that are in the entertainment world. As well. yeah, I mean, uh, I know Wayne Newton is a big five fan. Yes. Clint Holmes, another one, is a uh -huh. good five fan. Friends of mine that I just constantly have been hearing from them recently yes. telling me text, Joe, what do you think of who's your pick out of fight Saturday night? <laughs> yeah. Manny Pacquiao, Keith well, Thurman. Make sure, yes, you tune Man. in to uh, our show September 7th where Peter Guzman, you know, Latin. I'd like to talk <laughs> about <laughs> President yes. of the Latin Chamber of Commerce here in Vegas, local guy. Um, good friend of mine. I built a great relationship with him. We've worked together and uh, well, what we're do you do? What are you doing with now. him? What are you doing with him? So, what, what we do and we've, what we've done uh, in the past was we worked with uh, inner city kids the ladies of legacy um and those are schools with the clark county school district so we've been mentors uh, to these schools and to um, a lot of these kids so now what we're doing is we're doing a charity boxing event so that's another pro another project of mine a charity boxing uh event where he's going to get inside of the ring with uh, ferocious fernando vargas <laughs> And they're going to go gonna head so to great. head, yes, all for charity. And I'm going to be the referee for that. Oh, and you're going to be the referee, and you're going to call it, okay? Yeah. Um, we're going to have so much fun that day. Uh, Peter is a very, very hard worker. I'm personally uh, working with him boxing. You're his personal trainer. I'm his personal trainer, and uh, we are kicking butt every day in the gym. And he's losing a lot of weight. He's losing a and lot of weight. And he's feeling healthier. He's feeling healthier. Yes. He's, he tells me, he goes, every day we're in the gym, you're saving my life because... Uh, I'm feeling so much better, my, and that's what boxing does for for, for anyone. Exactly. It, it, you don't have to go in there and train for a fight, but you you can physically. But uh, boxing will train your whole body. You need your entire your entire body to be physically fit to get in the ring and take you know blows for three minutes. So it's a long three minutes to go in there. Yeah. No, but a lot of things is uh, round after round. One of the things I always tell our viewers out there is the attitude. You gotta have the attitude yes. to start your day. If you start your day with a good attitude, you're gonna go play. If you can start a day with a negative attitude, you, you, you're never gonna reach first base. Always be positive. 
about things you do in life. Wake up every day feeling like this is the best day of your life. If you can think like that, you're going to feel like that, and you're going to act like that. Yes. But those are the things that you have to do. Positive attitude. So mental, positive attitude. Exactly. And boxing will just embrace you and, and feel you create, yeah, big, big, uh, en good energy. Well, it's got, if you feel your body feeling good, that means that you're starting to say, yeah. wow. You start walking you, a little yeah, higher, a little, yeah, a little taller. You feel proud. You say, my God, I feel like a champ. Yes. I feel like a real champ in yes. life, you know? And the attitude, a positive attitude is what makes you get there. Absolutely. You know, of course, you got to eat well, you know, sleep well, stay away from that drinking, that smoking. Yeah. And, uh, extra high that you may get on the side. No, do it the way Diego and I have always done it. Clean our whole lives. Ne never done anything when it comes to uh, abusing our bodies when it, with other things other than happiness. Right, right. You know? If you want to be a, a, a bum and have no cares about it, but nothing, don't, to have no, 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 no future, you got to think about something new every day. Like me, I always wake up, I'm ready to go. Like I'm very creative. I got something every day in my mind I'm thinking about doing something positive. I go to the Nevada Box Hall of Fame gymnasium. Actually, it's a museum. Yes. It's like a gym. It's an interactive museum. You go in there, hit the heavy bag, hit the oh, speed yes. bag. I, I like to hit the speed bag, and people say, what, are you crazy? You still hit the speed bag? Yes. I feel good. <laughs> oh, I want to do it. Yes, and it's something that I'm... Uh, I, when I went there for the first time, I just went in there and walked into a, a, like you said, it was a boxing gym. I looked in there, I saw all the title heavy bags, and, you know, uh, it was title everything. So it's one thing that um, um, that brings good good attention to, to, to boxing is uh, the, the title equipment. Yeah, it's absolutely. one thing I do yes. want to send a shout out to, to Doug. Doug. Yeah, from title because he is doing something incredible and he is a champion in my eyes because he's yeah. he's helped out so many fighters and no, no question about to, it. To to yeah. put a fighter in a position where he's giving them uh, you know expensive boxing gloves, shoes, you know, everything that it takes. He's giving us a bag full of our tools. You know, it, yeah. it's tools that we need to do our job. Yeah. And Doug's been a great person in, in supplying me with now, a, he, he was, a ton of he, uh, he jumped equipment. On, he jumped on it right away when he heard that we opened up Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Yes. Of which uh, Michelle Corrales. So, Doug, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Michelle Corrales Lewis is the, the president and the founder of Rich Marada. And uh, I, I was a, one of the first inductees. As a matter of fact, I was the first inductee in the inaugural year 2013. I always felt I got to pay forward. So I, I was help, helping them get this museum together, and they were surprised that I got up a location. Oh, yeah. And here we are, the first time ever, uh -huh. the boxing capital of the world finally has uh, a location within the Heads Up Museum. The Heads Up Museum is a, trick, a 3D trick art museum. There are paintings on the wall. You stand in front of the painting, and when you take a photo of that individual in front of that painting, it looks like you're part of the painting. It comes oh, yeah. to life, for oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it looks like you're alive part of that. And this is what we like to uh, take a hands off to Chad and, and Tim for making it happen for the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Gave us an opportunity, and they believe in my my dreams of getting Nevada into a Boxing Hall of Fame. It gave yes. us over 2,000 square feet uh, space to set up. We have a boxing ring there. We have two heavy bags. We got two speed bags. We got ropes. You got headgears. You got uh, gloves. You got to bring your own mouthpiece because we don't have mouthpiece. <laughs> because you get your teeth knocked out. But we have all of that. Yeah. Here's a picture of one of the... Uh, yeah, at the Trick Art Museum, there's a, a jet flying over my head. And good thing I had no hair that day because <laughs> it, it would have blown it right off. It would have. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but that is a great place. Again, uh, the uh, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, uh, inside the Heads Up Museum at the Boulevard Mall, right off Maryland Parkway. And they open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through uh, Thursdays. And Fridays and Saturdays, uh, they're from uh, 10 a.m. to 12 midnight. So I, and it's, it's a great setup. I love it. Yes. Oh, speaking of businesses. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting one of my own with, uh, you know, longtime friend and, and, and current coach uh, is Salas. We are over at West Sahara at the City Athletic uh, uh, Club. City Athletic Club. Right. And upstairs we have a boxing gym where it's going to be the I'm a Knockout Fitness, which is me, and uh, the Ismael Salas um, uh, Fighting uh, Academy, the boxing academy that Salas is putting together. So that's, that's going to be a great, a great uh, gym for people to go to. Anyone can sign up. So and it's for kids and it's, adults? It's for kids and adults. Kids, yeah. And what's the location? It is at 7980 West Sahara. 
Was it Arrow? Here, yep. here in Las Vegas. Here in Las Vegas, and That's it's going to be a great gym. It's a small private area where I can work one on one with my clients. Oh, nice. Dylan, and I, I know you've been working out a lot yourself. You tell me you work out every morning. I do. And what do you tell, say about females in boxing? You had a show the other day. We, we did. A couple weeks back, we had a show about females in boxing, and um, I think it's overlooked. Sadly, mm -hmm. I think that sometimes uh, the boxing community doesn't want to or, or doesn't express about the, the female boxers as often. But Layla McCarter was right. at the event we had this past Friday, and I know Shannon is, is a former boxer. And right. Still, of course, in that mm -hmm. community with helping. Yes. And it's just, I think it's great. And, and it, it's, it is a way for us to express ourselves from the inside out and create that confidence that we're yes. looking for. And... Absolutely, mm -hmm. I think it's. Great. I think you would make a good ambassador for females in boxing. Ooh, oh, yes. I think that's a great. I think that might be something I might need to talk to Shannon and see if I can start working with her on her different projects. That pretty she's soon doing. we'll oh, see. Yes. Pretty soon we'll see with the boxing gloves on. Maybe one of those. I, I, it wouldn't be the first time that <laughs> I have you, boxing gloves you'd on. You'd be one of those masters. Let me kind. tell you. Yeah, your first lesson with me would be free. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, count me in. <laughs> well, you know they have just finished having the master Masters uh, tournament here in Las Vegas this past weekend. They have the amateurs uh, ages from 35 to 70. You heard that right, 35 to 70. They're competing. And I met a 70-year-old 70, 70 man who came up to me and said, Mr. Cord, I wanted to meet you. I knew you since I was a baby. I said, baby? I mean, <laughs> what am I, am I old? And he's 70 years young, but he, he was still competing at the, at the age of 70. So it was amazing to see uh, a yeah. gentleman. And they call, that's why they call it the Masters uh, the national championships, mm -hmm. and they all had these championship belts that were given. They were so proud with uh -huh. these belts around their waist and the gloves on. And we, we took pictures with these individuals on Sunday at the YMCA here on, on Durango and in Cheyenne. And it, was, it was amazing. Another tournament that, that uh, Doug and Title was a part Absolutely. of. Exactly. Awesome. He, he, Absolutely. He's a hell of a. Doug I'm is telling a, you. <laughs> one of the best sponsors in the world. Uh, he definitely has uh, come across to help out with the amateur programs. And with the uh, fighters, uh, you want to get good boxing equipment. You want to get a nice robe, uh, trunks, uh, gloves, headgear, a protective cup, uh, boxing shoes, a boxing ring. You want to put a boxing ring in your house? You can do that as well. Don't be crazy like me. I put one in my house. <laughs> I put one in my house. But I mean, they, these are the kind of things that Title has to offer all of you out there. So, I, if all you guys take advantage, go on to uh, Title.com on your website, and you can see. Uh, and what they have to offer for the uh, for the fans out there. So it's people like you who make me who I am. See, it's it's the good gestures of everyone around me and who I surround myself with Absolutely. that uh, makes me the person who I am. Because a lot of a lot of positive things that you you guys have done, you know, around me that I can. Well, you know, we we couldn't have picked a, a better individual than than Diego Magdaleno yeah. for being the the heart that he has, a big <laughs> heart, and uh, he, he's really a true champion, a person that. That wants to give so much to the community, is always available. You call him, they and 24/7. He'll pick up the phone, <laughs> and that's the kind of he is, the kind of guy he is. Really, he's like me. Call me anytime. I don't care. Uh, as long as if I can help you with something, right. I'm there for you. You know, I, I do what I can do best, and that is helping the kids out in the community. You need an outreach program. You need somebody like uh, Dylan or myself or, or Diego to be speakers at any event. We're there for you. You know. We're there to help out and get you guys on the right track and make you believers, just like we are believers uh, of the sport. We're believers of ourselves and believers in helping you out to make sure you go forward because there, there are times in life where we all need a little pickup yes. and a little, little, a little hug and a little kind words of advice to make sure that you succeed and be a successful person in life. And not only inside the ring, but like we said, individuals out there that need some help, reach out to Diego Magdaleno, reach out to Delyn May, myself, Joe Cortez. We're here to give you all we have, and we made it from the bottom of our hearts. We are uh, not the best, but we're hard to beat. <laughs> oh, and yes. we're trying to be the best. That's right. Yes. And I say to my dear friend, oh, Diego, yes. undisputed champion of the world, inside the ring, outside the ring. Delyn, thank you so much for being on the show. Diego, God bless you always. And Thank remember, so keep your guards up at all times. I'm fair but firm. Take it, <laughs> take it easy, guys. Fair but firm most of the time. <laughs>